following program is recorded content created by the Truth Network. It's Matt Slick Live. Matt is the founder and president of the Christian Apologetics Research Ministry, found online at CARM.org. When you have questions about Bible doctrines, turn to Matt Slick Live for answers. Taking your calls and responding to your questions at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. Everybody, welcome to the show. It's me, Matt Slick. You're listening to Matt Slick Live. If you want to give me a call, all you have to do is dial 877 207 And uh, we have two open lines right now. We've got a caller waiting, another caller coming in. And uh, today's date for the uh, podcasters is February 29th, leap year uh, 2024. February 29th, 2024. I released an article today. Actually, uh, it's kind of an, I think it's an interesting article. Um, hold on a sec, let me get over there. And so I did this study, okay, I started a little bit ago. It was not, not that big a deal, but, uh, you know, the, the Catholics always, and the Eastern Orthodox are always talking about how great Mary is. So I thought, I wonder, I wonder what she actually said in the Bible. Not what they think she says, and I went through and I found it, and uh, I found one, two, three, four, five, six things that she said. Now, depending on how you want to categorize stuff, some say six, some say seven, some say more, but it's in the sets, and I, I showed where it is, and then at the bottom of that article, I put a table in there, and uh, found out that boy, she referenced the Old Testament quite a bit in her what's called the Magnificat. I think what's really interesting is that the last recorded words of Mary were uh, whatever he, Jesus, says, okay, whatever he says to you, do it. That's interesting, and I, I agree with that. Whatever he says, that's what you should do. And he said, follow me. Then that's really interesting, because I believe that you should follow the Lord Jesus Christ. You should follow him, nobody else. Follow the Lord Jesus, because that's what he says. Follow me. So? Follow Jesus, okay? Real simple. Hey, I like that kind of stuff, quick and slick. Let's get on the line here on the air with Ivan from California. Ivan, welcome. You're on the air. How's it going? How's it going, Matt? Can you hear me? Oh yeah, I hear you fine, man. So what do you got, buddy? Okay. Right on. So I have a conversation going on, a little back and forth, respectful back and forth with a non believer. Um Okay. Basically he had presented a question about presuppositionalism and he had been asking you know he, he tried to prove that the bible is inconsistent because you know so you know well the christians say that god is all-knowing yet you can see he doesn't know things because he reacts in such a way like you're getting, getting more difficult things. you're getting more difficult to understand you, you were good and then all of a sudden it's like you're 15 feet from the phone can you try that again okay what about what about oh hold on let me get, let me get close. all right how about now yes. Now that's better. There you go. All right. Okay. So yeah. we'll, we'll, go ahead. Yeah. So he was just saying that you know the Lord regretting. I, I disputed. I, I dispelled that out. And the the Lord regretting, and then the fact that you know he's oh, not yeah. all powerful and, and whatnot. And he he basically kind of condensed it down to well, all you're gonna do is you know the Bible. The Bible is like a. You're, whatever the Bible says, if I if he reads it a certain way, I'm just going to say that's not what it means. And so he kind of just says, this is what the book says, but this is what it actually means. And he kind of just says that it's arbitrary in that sense. But I was just wondering how you would go about responding to someone who just says that basically, because I'm trying to give them the true, the right interpretation where Scripture is not um, contradictory. And I told him that instead of turning my back on God and, and, and murmuring liar, I come to God and I ask for wisdom, and I ask for clarity, and, and mm-hmm. to reconcile the scriptures. But um, yeah, how would you respond to something like that, like an accusation that I'm just kind of molding scripture so that it would fit to my beliefs? I'd ask him, and how do you know that? How do you know it? Okay, because then you have to go to the scriptures and read it, and go check it out. It's really simple. So an atheist says, oh, you're just making that interpretation the way you want it to say. Well, let's go check it out. Let's go look at it. Is that okay with you? Let's go look, and I'll have you tell me what you think it means. So now what I'm doing is getting the, the atheist to read God's Word, and he's interpreting it. 
That's exactly what I want. I want him to do that. Because if he were to say, no, I don't want to do that, well then, wait a minute. If you say you don't want to do something like that, yet you're saying I'm doing it, just making it up, well, how would you know? Shouldn't we go there to see if I'm making it up? Don't you think that's good? Because if you don't want to go there, then you don't know if I'm making it up or not. So why would you say that? You see? Yeah. Are you there? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I see. It's simple. Be, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. I am going to have that conversation hopefully with him uh, soon. It has been a little bit like uh, here and there conversation, but I am expecting to have that conversation. But um, he was like kind of giving me what ifs, like what if the God is this and what if that, and I told him that basically like the what ifs. Um, you're, you're giving me like a list of what ifs, but you know. And I didn't press him on it, but I guess I could say that. How do you know? Um, well, 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 hold on, hold on. When, so if you can, what are the one of the things he said? Well, what if this? That's I'd like to know what those saying, are. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. No, yeah, go ahead. That's all right. Oh, so he was just saying like, what if the God that I have like. What if essentially there is like some? I mean, he got pretty bizarre. Like, there's a wait, wait, hold on, like hold on. Technology. Just give me a, just focus in. What what's a one of the one ifs that he said? So, what if there's a technological advancement, you know, far beyond our understanding that just has a, that grounds reason and logic and all these things? What if it grounds it and, and oh. we just okay wrong okay. on enabling of God? So I'd say. So when atheists say that kind of stuff to me, I say, so what you're saying is you don't know if it's possible. It might happen, so that's where your hope and your faith is? I said, wow, I mean, well, what if there's a, a bunch of uh, aliens from the Andromeda galaxy that are controlling your mind and making you ask these kind of questions? What if? I mean, hey, might as well. You know, I guess anything's possible inside the world of what if, right? doesn't make any sense I say yeah you don't argue with what you don't have argue with from what you do have don't say well what if this what if that give me something more solid than guesswork and science fiction because I, I prefer reality when I'm talking about God okay oh I see mm -hmm. okay yeah I'm gonna think this I'm gonna think this over I'm gonna get into a dead zone so I'll cut off but thank you very much Matt have a good day <laughs> Good call back and give me some more of his what ifs so we can talk about him. It's really simple to do this with him. Okay, just carry it to his conclusion and and uh, takes a little bit of little bit of finesse, but it's not that bad. Okay. All right, buddy. I will do. All right, brother. Lord bless you. All right, man. God bless. All right, let's get to Spencer from North Carolina. Welcome. You're on the air. How you doing? Hello. I'm doing all right, by God's grace, man. How you what doing, you got, buddy? Awesome. Uh, okay. <clears throat> listening to you at the beginning, talking about Mary. My question is: is where where do women stand in the ministry of uh, passing the word along to fellowship and getting them to come to Christ? Where where is their position on that in the ministry? Well, where do they stand? They can do. They could do all kinds of stuff. I mean, if there was a woman, if I was driving down the street and I saw a couple of women, for example, on the street corner, I wouldn't want one to be by herself. And she's got a sign for Jesus out there and she's uh, preaching the gospel. To stuff. I, I pull over. I'm going to say, hello, how are you doing? And uh, introduce myself and find out who they are. And if someone comes up and, and one of the women starts giving the gospel, I'm going to be sitting there shut up and I'm going to pray. Good for her. No problem. Now, if I'm at a church, however, and a woman gets up in the pulpit to give a sermon, now that then I'm going to say, no, we got a problem, because the Bible says they can't be pastors and elders. It says they can't. There's a, there's admonitions on this. In fact, I just I just um, emailed somebody yesterday at a, a local church where they have women pastors, and I said, uh, can I talk to somebody about this, just to see if they're going to actually respond, which I doubt if they will. But nevertheless. Um, so that, that's it. I mean, you know, we want to encourage women to do as much as possible, and we don't want to make them feel as though they're second-class citizens, because they're certainly not. They can uh, proclaim the gospel. Right. They can teach. They can equip people. They can do a great many things. They can. It's just that they're not to be pastors and elders, okay? okay. And then where can I locate that in the Bible? Locate what? That, that, that you're saying that it shouldn't be uh, pastors and elders. 
Sure. Um, I can tell it to you. I don't know if you can remember the verses I can tell you, but there's an article on my website about yeah. it. So you get all the information on the website. Okay. So if you go to CARM.org and you type in, Can Women Be Pastors and Elders? You'll find the article and okay. you'll be able to... Uh, let me do it right now. Type in, Can Women Be Pastors and Elders? Enter and should... Or it says, Should Women Be Pastors and Elders? And uh, the answer is, No. Real simple. And I go through the scriptures... Okay, and uh, I've got them memorized, okay. but uh, there it is right there. And with some objections that they want to raise, and the very bad exegesis that a lot of people uh, uh, undergo, a lot. Okay. okay. So, um, with that said, so these, like, Joyce Myers and a few mm -hmm. of them that I've, I can't remember the names of the other ones, but she stands out. She shouldn't be doing what she's doing. Is that what you're saying? Is that considered a false prophet, or? Well, she is a false prophet, but um, because she teaches heresy, and that I'm I'm not aware of any of repentance on uh, some of the things that she's taught. That Jesus stopped being the Son of God. That Jesus was born again. Jesus paid for our sins in hell. He went to hell in our place. If you don't believe Jesus went to hell, you can't be saved. We're called little gods. She said she doesn't sin anymore, uh, that the host of hell was literally on Jesus, and they were laughing. Uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> she gets revelation knowledge. These are, are very bad, and uh, some of them disqualify her from being inside the camp of Christ due to her denial of the personal work of Christ. So uh, she's a heretic, flat out, uh, and she teaches damnable heresy. Now, here's a question, though. Someone like her, can a woman have a conference? This is a tough one. Can she have a conference, let's just say, a uh, women conference, uh, how to be better wives, better uh, better Christian women, etc. this kind of a thing, and it's supposed to be for men only. Go for it. Absolutely. Have a conference, teach them. All right? All right. Can she have a conference like that if men are present? Now, this gets in a little bit... Uh, more difficult stuff because, well, what does it mean to have men present and, and stuff? Well, uh, yeah, what if it was just only a bunch of women there and there were some police guys there uh, as guards, you know, just doing security? Well, can she not teach? But nah, it just seems to be going too far. To, that'd be ridiculous. So the, what we know is that women are not to be in teaching authority in the church context. We know that for sure. So uh, a, a venue... Like at a, say she rents, someone rents a building, a speaking place, and puts an advertisement out. Well, okay. What if she is teaching about how to program your computer better? No problem. What if she's teaching about uh, the Trinity? Okay. If she's an expert in the Trinity and she teaches on it, uh, all, all right. As long as she is not uh, claiming ecclesiastical authority, then so far I wouldn't have any problem with that. You see what I'm saying? It's a tough one. But we have so yeah. many variables today. Yeah. 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 So, but so they're not to be pastors and elders. Yeah. Annoying yeah. people. Right. I'm sorry. What? Okay. No, I like. Okay. So when well, she's on, we standing in break. the pulpit teaching you, yeah, that, that's okay. that, that that's well. false. That that is definitely false. Now hold on, because we need to take a break. We'll be right okay. back. Okay. Hey folks, we'll be right back after these messages. If you want to give me a call, 877-207-2276. We'll be right back. Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. All right, well, welcome back to the show. Hope you're enjoying it, and I also hope you're challenged. I know there's a lot of people out there who think women pastors and elders are biblical. Let me just flat out tell you they are not, and I am very dismayed uh, at the uh, apostasy that's occurring in the Christian church in that they allow, so many Protestant churches allow women uh, to be pastors and elders when the Bible clearly teaches to the contrary. And so I, my recommendation is that if you're attending a church that uh, supports that, women pastors and elders, my recommendation is after you tell the staff why, you're, why, why you are leaving, then do so. 
Okay. Uh, just leave. See, I'm leaving because you have women pastors and elders. It's not biblical. You can go to CARM. You can print up the article to hand out to people. And there's one specifically for that. And uh, you can say, I'm, I'm out of here. And just go. That's what I recommend. Okay, let's get back to Spencer from North Carolina. Spencer, welcome. You're on the air. Yes, sir. I'm still here. Um, so with that said, um, I know the Bible says that in the end times, there will be a lot of false prophets and a lot mm -hmm. of false teaching. How do we differentiate that in our, you know, going forward in the future? Because Jeez. I really feel like we're getting close to these times. Mm -hmm. What's happening is just as the beginning of the fall, the beginning of the, the apostasy, Satan doubted God's word. So also at the end of everything, people will doubt God's word as a whole did God really say they'll doubt the sufficiency of the Word of God this is happening in the Protestant uh, denominations a lot now, the reason I bring up the word Protestant is because I talk a lot to the Eastern Orthodox and to the Roman Catholics and I say that they already are in apostasy but I also add that the Protestant churches are moving that way as well we don't have the market cornered on truth within Protestantism there is a lot of idiocy and stupidity and the reason is is because they're not taking the Word of God seriously they say they do but they don't submit everything they do say speak feel to God's Word and use it as the final authority just as the Rome, I mean, excuse me, the Roman Catholics and the Eastern Orthodox have moved into apostasy because they don't use the Word of God as the final authority. So too, those Protestants who don't use the Word of God as the final authority, they do the same thing. You know, the Spirit told me. Uh, that's that's the, the final authority. I don't care what you say. The, I know the Holy Spirit told me. He told me this and he told me that. That is using your experience as the final authority, not God's Word. And when that happens, apostasy is just around the corner the further you walk. And so how do you get rid of this? How do you stop this? It's simple. You study the Word of God. You study it. Now, people don't know how to study the Word of God. They don't even know what the Word of God really teaches in a lot of areas. Well, I... At the risk of sounding egocentric, hey, look at my site. You know, I have had the privilege of being able to study God's Word for 40 years, 44 years actually. And uh, I write articles daily, always searching the scriptures, always searching the scriptures, always searching the scriptures, always. And so I re recommend people, if they want to learn biblical theology, which they need to know what's the Trinity, who's Jesus. Why was he baptized? What is justification? These are the basics of the Christian faith. And most Christians don't know them. And they've been at church for years, and they don't know them. So what I say is, go to my articles, because I write succinctly, I write briefly, and I write biblically, to the best of my ability. Now, my last name's Slick. You've all, always got to be careful of a guy named Slick. So I say, check what I say against Scripture. Always check what I say against the Word of God. But if you can do this, if you don't mind reading articles written by a guy with autism who hyper-focuses and gets to the point quickly and just goes to the Word to see what it says, if you don't mind that, you can learn a, a lot really fast. And that's what I recommend people do. Another thing you can do very quickly and easily, eh, I wouldn't say very quickly and very easily, but quickly and easily, is to go to the CARM website and look up the Statement of Faith. The Statement of Faith on CARM is a mini systematic theology. And I'm going to see how many pages it would be if I were to print it up. I'm going to do that just to have an exercise. But I discuss in there, and I go through, I need to modify it. Mod modify it once every two or three years, just kind of polish it up. But it's got uh, how many sub-points? It's got 37 points. You know, living, uh, heresy, marriage, eternal judgment, evangelism, church officers, church membership, uh, free will, eternal security, divine election, salvation, baptism, atonement. And so I go through, and what I do is I give the statements with affirmations, usually affirmations and denials, with Scripture. And all you have to do is go to the website 
and look and just put your mouse over the, the scripture reference and a window pops open and you can read it. And so it, it's right there. It's so easy. And I recommend that people study it. Not because what I say is great, but because it's, the, it's basic and go through it. I've had a lot of people tell me over the years that they've used that statement of faith as a teaching tool for people. I know that missionaries in Africa have done this. They print up the statement of faith and they just teach from it. And they're able to give people a very good, succinct, yet sufficient uh, statement of faith and they, on biblical theology. So that's another way to do stuff. And then just to, just to toot the own uh, carm horn here, we have uh, three schools, online schools, I don't mention them very often, but we charge $33 a piece for them. And for whoever can't afford them, you just email us and say, we, you can't afford them. Can you have them for free? We give them to you for free. Uh, we don't care. But uh, we do use them to keep the lights on. So the point I'm trying to make here is that uh, there's ways to learn and people need to learn. But it seems to me, I get the impression that people go to church, they simply want to be babysat and uh, pre-tribulation rapture, Jesus is going to come back, uh, he's a gentleman, it's up to you, and don't worry about it, things will work out fine. And uh, th that's it, you know, stuff like that. A lot of problems there, okay? I, mean, I could go on a lot about this. Right. <clears throat> so, just real quick, one more question. What, what Bible, there's so many out there, the King James, the New Revised, mm -hmm. what Bible should one who's wanting to learn more about the Bible study? And is there a way to cross-reference that? Sure. I recommend that people get probably three Bibles. And uh, okay. the NASB, which is, in my opinion, the most accurate and uh, in the Greek, to English, that is. And some people may disagree, but that's what I believe. And so I, I recommend that people uh, check that out. And um, the ESV is pretty good, uh, and the you know the New King James is pretty good. It's just wise to have you know three versions, and you go through and you check. And then there's online there's something called the Blue Letter Bible. It's called BlueLetterBible.com, and I use it uh, not so much for research because I have everything I need, but what I I use I go there. And I will find things, I link them to articles so that people can check further information out. So there's good sources right there. Okay, buddy? We got a break coming up. Yeah. What, was, right, the, what was the second one, real quick? ESV. Yes, sir. The NASB, ESV, and New King James are good. You'll do well with those. Okay, we got a break, awesome. so hold on. Yeah. Hey, folks, we'll be right back after these messages. Please stay tuned. It's Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. All right, everyone, welcome back to the show. If you want to give me a call, all you have to do is dial 877-207-2276. You can also email me at info at carm.org, info at carm.org. And in the subject line, just put uh, radio comments or radio questions, and I'll get to them. All right, let's get to Ryan from Ohio. Ryan, welcome. You're on the air. Good evening, Matt. It's Brian from Ohio. Hey. How you doing, buddy? So what, what do you got? Well, my question concerns spiritual warfare and spiritual warfare at a personal level, not, you know, spiritual warfare like we're seeing all over the world right now. But is it possible, um, and, and I'm you know, we're we're in a discussion group. We've been talking about this, or in a believer, in a in a in a saved born again believer's mind, for Satan to ever um, plant a seed of a thought of a, of a negative thought or a destructive thought that could be, uh, you know, uh, lead to something else, or is that impossible for Satan to plant a seed in a in a person's mind like that? Um. I'm trying to find uh, a verse. It's in the back of my head, uh, Satan put uh, something like that. Put. Um, I'm trying to remember if it's in there. Maybe someone in one of the chat well, rooms could, if they know the verse. 
Go ahead. Go ahead. And where we, you know, I mean, he he definitely seemed like he put a thought in Judas's mind, right? He uh, yeah. In, in the garden, now, of course, Judas. in the garden, the serpent was speaking directly to Eve. So I don't know if that's really putting a thought in somebody's mind or not. But he's certainly yes. an influence. That's but can in, he actually put a thought in your mind? Uh, I don't know. The devil have all, having already put into the heart of Judas to betray him. Now that's uh, John thirteen two, but we. I think it's after that that this is interesting. Uh, that's right, John thirteen. That's right. Okay, interesting. Okay, here we go. This is interesting. So uh, in John thirteen two, it says that Satan uh, moved him to do something, but uh, I'll get to that again. In uh, thirteen twenty seven, it says Satan and entered him. So in thirteen. Let's go back up to 13. Come on, here we go. Where we go? 13.2. During the supper, the devil, having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, to betray him. So, it would seem to be the case. Uh, okay, I'm looking at some other references. Okay, so it does seem to be the case that, that Satan definitely influenced, influenced Judas. Now, it says put into his heart. I think that's uh, into his mind uh, to betray right. Jesus, and so it would seem that yes, this kind of thing can be done. And then later in, in thirteen twenty seven, Jesus, uh, I mean Satan, enters uh, into uh, into Judas. So we can see that this is happening before the the possession. All right. So now the question is, what about believers? Can Satan do this to believers? Exactly. And Exactly. That's the question. Judas, he entered into Judas. He entered into Judas, and a, a Christian cannot be demon possessed, right? Right. Or, uh, possessed by a fallen angel, but but you know, uh, Judas may not mm -hmm. have really been what we would consider a Christian, right? Today, right. Well, here's another. Here's another uh, thing. Um, this is really good. This would be a good good article for me to write uh, for a different perspective. So in Acts chapter five, it says, uh, it's, "Where'd it go? Where'd it go?" It says uh, in verse three, Peter said to Ananias, "Ananias is Sapphira. You know they sold the land and right. lied about right. about stuff. Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit?" So now I'm looking at cross references. Uh, okay, and. Uh, all right, and there we got that map. So now here's a question: uh, Was see, it's good. Everything, nothing's easy sometimes. Were were Ananias and Sapphira saved? So well, they were, you know, they if were they members, were, were they members of the early church, and weren't they there when the Holy Spirit came upon people and everything? And did the, you know? Did they just if that's the case, then we could say that. Uh, that even as Christians, they could have their minds be filled with with evil by the evil one. If they were never right. Christians to begin with, then we can't say officially that a Christian can have that happen. So what I'm doing first is looking at the scriptures, trying to figure out what the scriptures say in this regard, and uh, and so the next okay. So I don't see anything, but you know, on the other hand, you know, I'll, I'll be vacuuming, washing dishes whatever and all of a sudden I'll get this evil thought in my mind I'm like what the heck was that it doesn't happen very often exactly. but I'm sitting there going what's, what's going on so you know there's lots of possibilities one is a logical possibility as in what can be done potentially is that Satan actually whispered something into my mind my heart my, whatever it is however that works and I thought something I shouldn't have thought okay or I don't, I don't need Satan to, to be bad I'm pretty bad on my own I mean, right. my heart's wicked, deceitful. Right, yeah. Okay, and and uh, so maybe I'm just washing dishes, and I'm cleaning a glass or something, and for some reason that triggers a thought because of associations of my past life. Who, who knows? There are just so many variables that we really can't say, oh, this does mean this, that does not mean that. And so right. I know this, Satan can't indwell a believer. All right. And I would say right. that the, the verdict is out on whether or not he can cause us or influence, 
influence us in our thoughts to think something bad. I would say he could do it through external means, for sure, in that uh, you can go to somebody's house who's a pagan, and they might have some naughty pictures and stuff going around on TV and stuff, and that can influence you. And so, you know, so there's external means, but the inside your brain, Certainly. that or the heart, that one, I, I just, I don't have a great answer. I wish I did. Well, and the, yeah, certainly, and 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 I, I agree with you. You know, you can be, and that's one of the things that makes me think that it, it is possible where I will be sitting, concentrating, focusing on something. It even in church, sitting and listening to a sermon, and I'm focused on the sermon. I'm taking notes, and all of a sudden, you'll get a terrible thought, and it's like, where did that come from? Yep. And we're we're reading a book right, right now in a in a, or a home group by Neil T. Anderson called The Bondage Breaker about that. And so, the argument is, can he can he, obviously you know I don't know that he can read your mind, but can you sow a thought in there? Obviously, we're influenced by the world. We're influenced if we go somewhere like you said, and there's something bad on TV, or there's or you see something yeah. bad, and, and and it can trigger a, a thought being a, a fallen nature and in a fallen world. But yeah, so so I, I guess what I'm hearing you say then, Matt is there maybe isn't really a clear answer as to whether or not he can put a just a, a tad bit of a thought into a believer's brain or if that's just coming from our fallen nature. Well, yes, close to what I would say. I would say from what I've seen in my study of Scripture, I've not come to a, a, an absolute conclusion because I don't think the Bible tells okay. us. But there might be someone out there who knows something about this who's listening and say, Matt, you're missing this one verse, and whatever. And then they could call me up or email me or whatever and say, hey, you missed this, because I don't know everything. But I've not seen anything like that in Scripture. And so it's interesting, you know, and it's a good question. And the, and like I do sometimes, what I, what I do is guess my way around the topic in order to say, I don't know, <laughs> you know, because I just don't yeah. know sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's what it is. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, I'm with I appreciate you, that. Yeah. Oh, sure. No problem, man. Hope hope it, well, I hope it helped. Even though it doesn't sound like it really did, but I hope it does help. <laughs> you know. Appreciate you. Appreciate your program, too. So thank you. All right, man. Have a great evening. Okay, God bless. Really, you too. Thanks. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. You know, uh, so while I'm talking to him, while I'm talking to him, I actually open up my file where I do um, questions. And I wrote, can Satan put thoughts in a Christian's mind? And I I uh, put in my notes I was finding right away, you know, in John 13, 27, or 13, 2 and 13, 27. And uh, because maybe I'll just write an article on something like that uh, and just come up to the point of saying, I don't know, you know, because I don't. Yeah, I, that kind of frustrates me because I kind of like the idea of being able to answer people's questions. I've always liked that. I've always liked that, even as, as a kid. I just like, well, there's the answer to that. Because I've always, well, in school, I was, you know, a little bit ahead of the average person because, I'm, well, I just was able to do things quickly and easily and figure things out, you know, logically and science and math. And so I got in this habit of of helping people and teaching them very early on even in elementary school uh you know and stuff i remember in the, it was either the first grade or the second grade just to do it i wrote out numbers from one to a thousand just to do it and uh i love science man and math i always loved it so i was always helping people i love doing that with theology too but sometimes i just don't have an answer hey there you go. If you want to give me a call, all you have to do is dial 877-207-2276. And uh, we'll be right back after these messages. Please stay tuned. It's Matt Slick Live. Taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the show. If you want to give me a call, 877-207-2276. Let's get to Nadja from North Carolina. Welcome. You're on the air. Hi, how are you? Good. Connect. You're making a left turn or right turn? <laughs> a left. <laughs> That's what I thought. Okay. I don't know why I thought it was a left turn. I just turn. wanted I to. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just wanted to share an experience. Um, so I um, have been raised 
you know, a Christian Baptist, largely a believer, um, and the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And um, I didn't realize until recently that maybe I wasn't saved or, or um, I don't know, I guess that's the best way I can put it. Anyway, I had fallen sick about three years ago. I'm still dealing with it. And um, I had a bunch of crazy symptoms just coming and going and coming and going. And I'm a mother of five, so it's hard to be sick. Um, and so I, I just went to my word, of course, and that's all I knew to do. And um, I, um, I, uh, I realized that, you know, I really haven't given my life or given the Lord lordship over my life, like, you know, purposefully. Um, and so I realized that and I said, okay, Lord, um, you know, I, 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 I give you my life. I give you access and I, I, I invited him in. And so about three or four weeks after that, I had an experience. I was listening to a testimony, um, of someone, um, that my mom had sent me. And, um, uh, I, while I was listening to this testimony, I paused. And I, I, something just moved me up, and I was, I began just praising God. Um, my arms were up; I could not put them down, and I praised and praised and praised. I had three kids home at the time, um, so they came downstairs to the basement, like, "What's mom doing?" And I just couldn't stop praising. And then I was thrown to the floor on hands and knees, head down, just praising God. All I could say is, "Thank you, thank you." And I, to me, I. I I realized that God, I, since I had given permission for God to have lordship over my life, He was moving now in my life. And to me, it was like I'm. It was like a confirmation. I'm going to help you through this now, through this illness, through everything that's going on. So, anyhow, long story short, um, I a few weeks. Uh, about two months after that, um, my children had gone um, on vacation with my husband, and I was I was sick, and I said I, I couldn't go, I couldn't travel, and so um, during that time, I had ten days, almost well nine days, at home by myself, and I just prayed and I worshipped and I listened to sermons and you know just just getting myself you know together, and um, I had a satanic attack on me and my heart rate dropped super fast and all I could utter was Jesus help me <laughs> and um, and then my heart rate um, I almost fainted and then my heart rate came up again and I just started you know thanking the Lord and praising the Lord and I thought I was okay and then it hit again and I got fearful and I went to the hospital anyway um, I'm mentioning this because um, now uh, sh- about a month after that, I was. Well, do you have a question, though? Do you have a Do you have a question? Yes. Okay. Oh yes, I'm getting to it. Sorry, <laughs> I just want to get back. Around. Any, uh, uh, um, about a week or two later, um, I was praying with my mother and I, and I began to pray in a tongue, and um, I had never done that before. Um, now, my mother has struggled from a really bad anxiety to the point where she gets the shakes and she gets pale. And I always wondered, well, is this a demonic possession or is this a, something demonic, you know, within her? And um, she, um, she well, just I'm hasn't been question, delivered though. on it. Okay. So if you've got a mm-hmm. question, we need to have that kind of coming up here a little bit so we can get to, to it, okay? So, okay. well, I guess mm-hmm. I'm just get, I'm sharing a, a, a story as to a believer who seems to be plagued with some sort of demonic force. And it's my mom, because she gets cold, she gets shaky. Oh. And and I'm just, okay. the, the conversation you were having with the gentleman before, um, I'm, just, I'm just sharing because it's related. Well, uh, uh, someone getting shaky when, during what? When, when she's praying or what? When she, no, it's like when she, if she has an anxiety, she has these anxiety attacks. So if okay, there's a so pressure situation, she she shakes during an anxiety attack. Okay, so yeah, she did, can she this she be did, demonic? The answer I'm sorry? is yes, it can. Yeah, it can be a demonic attack, 
uh, because we do know that demonic forces can influence situations uh, and people in varying levels. Now, it could be. I'm not saying it is. But it could also just be that she's just having, uh, she needs a vacation and needs to uh, not have coffee as much or whatever it is. That's always a possibility as well. And this kind of a thing mm-hmm. needs to be looked at with uh, the elders of the church and doctors and stuff. Because, you know, having a panic attack, it's a real thing. And people, uh, you know, the body gets stressed. And so when shaking is just part of that. Okay. I, uh, we have family members who, or I should say one who, every now and then that happens to, to that person. And uh, there's different reasons and different triggers. And people are going through things at different times. So, yeah, it can certainly happen. Is it demonic? It might be, might not be. We just can't just jump yeah. on the merry ground and say it is. Okay? Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> sure. I hope that helped a little. But I, I would suggest that she talk to the elders, and and then you can pray, and others can pray to see if that's what, what's going on, if there's a demonic influence. Yeah. And if not, then, you know, I, you know, just see if there's a medical thing going on. That's all. Yeah, I suggested okay. that, you know, she asked the Holy Spirit to, to guide her and show her what's the cause of this. If it's something that can be handled sure. natural, if it's something that is, you know, needs spiritual warfare. Absolutely. You've got to cover all the bases. That's right. Yeah. You pray, and and if need be, you go to the doctors that God has ordained to help. And, you know, sometimes, right. sometimes people with panic attacks, if they're re- recurring, Sometimes they need to go see a psychologist. And I'm not saying because they're mentally weird. No, because a lot of times there are triggers that activate things from earlier times. Like, you know, like oh, yeah. when men are in war and they come home, they have PTSD and they'll have panic attacks. Yeah. It's not their fault. It's not, any, it's not a weakness. There, there's something going on. And so, uh, you know, it's all, there's just a lot of possibilities. That's all. You need to check them out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Have a good night. Okay. Okay, good. God bless. All right. Now let's get to Charles from Ohio. Charles, welcome. You're on the air. Okay, thanks, Matt. I, I called in I don't know, uh, months, six weeks ago. It's hard to keep track here lately um, right. about my wife, and she was going in for tests for uh her pulmonologist, they did one test that, that he determined is she has, uh, tw- she was 20, I'm sorry, 95% uh, probability of cancer in her lung. And so we had to go to uh, Indiana University uh, Medical Center Hospital, and she got a biopsy um, a few weeks ago. And he, the doctor there said he thought that that was a correct what the pulmonologist said, but they had to wait a few more days for the pathology test, and it came back and said that she did have uh, lung cancer. And we just went um, to the uh, oncologist that uh, she was uh, referred to by her uh, pulmonary doctor at uh, the hospital in uh, Richmond and in Richmond, Indiana. Anyway, he said that it was the best. I, I know you prayed for her. We prayed for her on uh, radio. I don't know if you remember. You probably do. Um, and her oncologist said it was uh, stage one and it was small and it hadn't spread. And he thought that one to four uh, radiation treatments would take care of it. So um, uh, this is a combination, uh, you know, getting back with you, like you had suggested, and also let's praise the Lord and thank everybody for praying, and also to continue to pray that, um, because she still, she still has emphysema, and she still sits a lot, and she's been eating better, and she's been doing really good on uh, quitting her smoking. She smoked since she's 14, and she's 73 now. And, um, you know, she's been uh, just taking, like her pulmonologist said, she just takes a puff, and she'll put it out or throw it away. And, you know, I, I don't 
dagger all the time because I've learned a long time ago mm-hmm. that does more harm than good. But right. I'll, you know, say, how are you doing? And then she'll tell me, you know, she's, she's not inhaling. Well, she's got an old habit that's hard to break. Um, well, it's good. You know, i got people right now in the uh, chat who uh, in, have a private chat thing and uh, remember that. And and so remember, we, we have a prayer team, uh, prayer at karm.org, and it's run by Joanne. And uh, she does a great job with that. So, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm glad that you uh, called back and let us know because people do want to know about things like this when we hear stuff. And stage one... It's bad, but it's not that bad. I mean, you know what I'm saying. It, it, it's good. It's workable. It's doable. And uh, they can catch that. They can take care of it. That, that, that part is good news. So, yeah. 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 So, I'm thankful. thank the Lord. And thank you. And I, I got something. If, if you got time for me to kind of add something, I, sure, I was disabled with anxi- anxiety disorder, okay. and I could... I just wanted to kind of give my two cents on that, that um, I, I was dis- disabled in 1991. I, I painted cars for about 25 years. And um, one thing that I learned is that, that stress and anxiety, uh, it builds up over time. You mm-hmm. mentioned the guys in war. My, my dad was a prisoner of war at, in World War II from the Battle of the Bulge. And he was a prisoner for five months uh, out in the cold in the uh, Ardennes. But he came back, and he he had some you know some issues, but not he didn't have like real bad PTSD like some of the fellas that uh, that we're more aware of now. But it it does um, mm-hmm. it does, it does build up over time, and it doesn't just go away just after taking nope. a short vacation that's right you but know my dad was my in world war it's okay no, i'm just saying the same thing my uh, dad was in I, world war ii korea and vietnam and he was in all three and overseas and uh he had a breakdown in his 60s and it was from ptsd and uh he had to see a psychologist yeah. for a while and and he got through it and and really healed well you just got to deal with these things you oh, know, good. it does happen Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, you you were talking well, we gotta about go because the, the, uh, the music. The mu- <laughs> There's the music. Sorry, buddy. Okay. You have to call back tomorrow. Okay. That's okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right, buddy. Thanks, and thanks for. You're good, and thanks for the update. We really appreciate it. God bless. All right, folks. Hey, we are God out of bless. time, and may the Lord bless you. And by His grace, we'll be back on there tomorrow. So I hope you have a great evening, and we'll talk to you then. God bless everybody. Bye. Another program powered by the Truth Network.